Math 2501 and I'm doing some problems on Chapter 7 on orthogonal transformations. So in this problem they give you a matrix T which is one third um, of the, these, this matrix here and you're asked to show that T is in fact represents a um, transformation which is a reflection followed by a rotation. So we want to show that this is a reflection about some plane and we're going to find the equation of the plane followed by a rotation about the normal to that plane, about the axis which is normal to the plane. We want to find the angle of rotation as well. So three things to do. We have to show it, it does what I just said and we have to find the plane of reflection and the angle of rotation. So for the first part, we have to simply check, we have some nice theorems, we have to check that if I work out T transpose times T, I want to show that we get the identity matrix and that tells us it's an orthogonal matrix. Well, you're doing this in an exam, so what do you do? You want to do it, you want to show them the examiner that you understand what you're doing. On the other hand, you don't want to write down vast amounts of arithmetic because you know it's supposed to be the identity matrix anyway. So I would do something like this. When I multiply this by its transpose, I'll have a factor of 1 of 9 coming out. I know it's going to be the identity uh, when I divide by 9. So I do the arithmetic mentally. And I just write that down, and that's equal to the identity matrix. Now, what can they say? I, if they say, where did you do that? I say, well, I did that mentally. I just uh, multiplied everything out and got the result. So that'll save them of time. So therefore, T is uh, orthogonal. Now, every orthogonal matrix has determinant plus or minus 1, every non-zero orthogonal matrix, determinant plus or minus 1. Uh, so I need to check which way round it is here, whether it's plus 1 or minus 1. So here I need to get the determinant of t. Now here you really have to do some work to convince you, yourself and the marker that you have got the, the correct answer because it's not immediately obvious which one of these it's going to be. Now be careful with this one third here because when I get the determinant of this, this one third is affecting each of the three rows of the matrix. So when I take it out of the determinant, I'm going to get a 1 on 27. I'll get a one third for each of the rows. So be careful of that. Times the determinant of what's left. And I'm going to leave the middle row alone and just do a little bit of row reduction. So I'm going to take that row minus twice that one. So this minus twice that, this minus twice that. And I'll get that, this one minus twice that, this minus twice that, and that minus twice that. And now I can uh, expand down the first column. So I get 1 over 27, 0 times I don't care, minus 1 times what's left when I cross out the row and column. So I get minus 6 minus there and then plus zero times I don't care. Now here you get 36 minus 9 which is 27 cancels gives me minus 1. If the determinant had have been plus 1 then I know that this is a pure rotation. The fact that it's minus 1 tells me it's a reflection followed by a rotation. So conclusion therefore T is a reflection in the plane which I'll call capital Pi followed by a rotation uh, through an angle alpha about uh, the normal to the plane. So the next job is to work out what the angle of rotate, what the possible values of angle of rotation are. And there you better remember the little formula. I simply remember what the, what the um, basic matrix looks like that does this. And remember it's got a cos theta sine minus cos theta sine theta minus sine theta cos theta. 
and up in the top corner it's got a plus one if it's a pure reflection and a minus one if it's a mixture of them. So the trace of that matrix is minus one plus two cos alpha and the trace of this matrix is two thirds. So you either remember that or you just remember off the formula. It's minus one plus two cos alpha um, is the trace of the original of the matrix you start with. So that says cos alpha then, so I take this on the other side, I get, I get 5 over 6. Generally, we would just ask you to find the cosine of the angle because now it's ambiguous. It could be plus or minus. So alpha is plus or minus the inverse cosine of 5 sixths. And to work out which one it is, is hard, and we're not going to expect you to do that. There is a trick for that, we'll explain to you in lectures, but we generally um, leave it slightly ambiguous there. So there are the angles. So the last bit is we need to find the plane of this plane, capital Pi, the plane of reflection. Now, if we, to get the equation of a plane in Cartesian form, it's got to go through the origin, so all I need to know are what the three coefficients are, and that gives me the normal. So if I work out what the normal is, then I can work out everything else. So just think about what the normal does. So if n is the normal, then when you map the normal vector under this, it's going to get flipped about the plane, so it's going to go to minus itself, and then if it gets rotated about n, it doesn't move. So t of n is going to be minus n. So this means this vector n is an eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals minus 1. So I'm going to get the uh, eigenspace for minus 1 for this matrix. So n belongs to the kernel of t minus minus i, so t plus i going to be um, one of the eigenvectors in the kernel of this. So in other words, the kernel of this matrix, now again, be very careful, I'm going to add one onto the main diagonal, but remember that I've got a third out the front. So you're really going to be adding on three onto the main diagonal. And then I can forget about, once I've done that, I can forget about the third from the kernel. And so I will just add 3 to the main diagonal, just note carefully that step. So I add 3 to the main diagonal, and then I can forget about the 1 third because the kernel of this matrix is the same as the kernel of the third of it. Now, it's, uh, I have no zeros, and getting these kernels, I like to have a zero, so I'm going to get a zero um, somewhere in here. So what will I do? Well, I think I'm just going to use that 1 to get rid of the 2. 1, 0, I'm not greedy. 1, 0 will do anywhere. So that minus twice, that is 0. That minus twice, that's minus 9. That minus twice, that's minus 3. Now, once I see a 0, firstly look at this matrix. Notice it's got rank 2, nullity 1. Think about why that is. So there's only one eigenvector uh, or one, um, one eigenvector hiding in here that will span the whole eigenspace. And so this is going to be the span of, I'm just going to write it down, look at the bottom row, I want something, something, something there that will dot product to give me zero. So I'll take one of those and minus three of those, that will work. I don't care what goes here at the minute, that's zero, minus nine, plus nine is zero. Then use the next row up, the next row up says, I've got, not sure yet, I've got 5, minus 6 is minus 1, so I need plus 1 to get rid of it. So that's by inspection. And now, as always, you check that this works on the top row. The top row gives you a double check that everything's happy. So you get 5, minus 2, minus 3, 0. So that's it. So this I can take as a normal to the plane. So the plane pi then is just x plus y minus 3z. The plane has to go through the origin. Think about why that is, because the zero vector will not move under this um, 
uh, transformation, nor will it change when you multiply by the matrix. So it's got to go through the origin, and there's the plane. 